All right, welcome back to the SDR podcast, otherwise known, otherwise known as the Start the Rebuild podcast. I'm your co-host, M. Fournier, alongside Ian Mills. What's going on? It is episode 26, the Le'Veon Bell episode. The Saquon episode. The uh, Clinton Portis. Mm, so, big uh, running back number 26. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to think. Uh, There's got to be some like DB that's 26. Oh. Did Adrian Peterson wear number 26? No, he wore 28. He might have worn 26 at some point in his career when say- he bounced around 50 times, but he wore 28 predominantly. With the Vikings, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Devin Singletary, 26? With the Bills? Yeah. Right? He wore like 41 in the preseason, remember? And then and then he switched from like the 40s to the 20s and everyone was like, whoa. Yeah, right? That I sounds right. He was 26. We're looking it up. I don't care. Yep, 26. At least on the Giants right now. Yep, Adrian Peterson for me. I feel like you might be right that he wore 26 at some point. He played for a million teams. Right. Yep, 26 on the Redskins at the time. Damn, no! Uh, so. yeah, the show is over. I just, yeah, we're done. I'm done. We're done. Why do I always try to get canceled on this? this uh... You, you're begging for it, dude. You yeah. fucking misogyny love. and racism. Misogyny, racism, yeah. That's what I'm known. Uh, so on that note, uh, on that note, <laughs> special shout out to Will Anderson. <laughs> shout uh, out, Andy. Yeah, we want to give a big shout out to our friend Will Anderson, who is an avid watcher of the show. And is about uh we just talked about this ten percent of our viewership. So he is like a, he's like almost as much of the show like worth like as much as we are. Like he's yeah. essentially the third person of this show. He's just it's, quiet. It's, it's, whatever will will can come and whatever like asking us to to talk about whatever and yeah. we would have to talk about that thing. Correct. Correct. The Cincinnati um, Bengals. We'll talk about them. The Los Angeles um, Dallas. We have talked about them. We have. Um. Big shout out to Wendy too as well. Uh, last episode is episode twenty five, and major miss on our part. It we really it really should have been the Rakeem Christmas episode. You know the guy who's famous for wearing twenty five in Syracuse basketball history because his last name is Christmas and Christmas is on the twenty fifth. So uh, yeah, overall this massive shout out to Will and yeah. uh, Love Will. you got to get him on the pod, Will. For sure. I can text you literally right now, but instead, I'm going to only ask you through this podcast episode. You're invited on the show next week. Right. This is us making sure that he watches this episode. If he skips this episode, he's never invited onto the podcast. Or when, uh, if he, assuming he's coming home for Thanksgiving, I'm home for Thanksgiving, you'll be home. We do in person Megapod. Who do that? Or we just our episode is live streaming uh Turkey Bowl flag football. Yeah. There's a j- chance I'm not there for Thanksgiving Day. That's Dude, what? what? Yeah, I know. Why? Uh visiting uh my girlfriend in New Jersey. Mm. It kind of worked out that, that that's a thing. I don't have yeah, I don't have a lot of like consecutive days off, but Thanksgiving allowed me to have consecutive days off. So You're gonna be there during the week though, right? I'll be there at points in the week, yeah. Because I'm going to be there the Sunday before until the Monday after. Oh, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm only gone the Tuesday through Thursday. Yeah. Including going to Bill's Niner Sunday night. December oh. 1st, I think. Oh. Massive. Right after the bye week. Massive. Yeah, I know. Also, uh, um, this weekend is a massive NFL slate. It is. It's crazy. You got Bill. Well, first of all, tonight is for the NFC East. Eagles, yeah. Commanders, amazing game. And then, what's up? I like the Eagles a lot in that. Oh my God. I do too. I was just talking about this with Zach earlier. I was like, uh, I, like not that the comm- the Eagles have a lot of like impressive wins this year, but it was more of a resume. more of a like a, like resume with this like core group of team that like you know that they're good the commanders have not beaten anyone the their only uh win against a team with a winning record currently is the cardinals 
which is a good win. Um, they were but, at the beginning of the year. Yeah, they were one and two when they played, but like they also beat the Bears when the Bears had a winning record. But like they've been horrible. I don't know. I just that being said, if the Commanders do win tonight, I'm fully ready to uh, accept them as like a contender in the NFC. Um. Yeah. I mean, looking at that, I actually was looking at the NFC earlier today. Like, it's, it's out. I mean, the Lions are obviously the one seed right now, as it stands. Yeah. But when you have the best team in NFL, hate to say it, when you have Jared Goff at quarterback, I'm always gonna be like, "Ah." yeah. I mean, fair. I mean, he's 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 been great uh, this year. He was bad. Like, he threw five picks, but like. Two of them aren't really like picks. It's also tough. I mean, like the interception, you know, like oh, do do interceptions are how bad are interceptions at this point? Throwing five's bad, but you're right. It's like how that. the issue though, I mean, maybe that's just me hating Jared Goff. Um, but yeah, you look at the NFC, the commanders with a win, I think, would be the two seed. Mm-hmm. And the Eagles are the two seed as it stands, but like this win realistically could very well be for the two seed. Cause I don't, I mean, the Lions, I don't know what the Lions schedule off the top of my head, but they're eight and one. They're off and running. It, it feels like, you know, I know they're only a game up on the Eagles uh, for the one seed, but it kind of does feel like, you know, their seed to lose. I kind of really like the Eagles in the NFC at the beginning of the season. They when look we good talk, right now. When we talked about uh, divisions, I think I actually, I don't, I didn't believe in them because if you look at last year, they were hor- like what the, the, they had an insanely I forgot it was six games a six game losing streak to end the yeah, year. Terrible. Um, you know they beat the Bills and and I think they might have beaten the Chiefs or something like that, and then they just couldn't win again. Um, which is kind of funny to look back on it, but yeah, they look legit. They look very very good. Saquon looks like a very good pick. It's funny that two of the best free agent signings of the off season were Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley. Yeah. How often do we say that about running backs? Um, yeah. But yeah, it's going to be a great game. And it's going to be the second straight Thursday night game. That's insane. That's like, has good, like, big stakes. Yeah. So Thursday night football is back. Um, like, but yeah, to that running back point, I think the, like, narrative that running backs don't matter and they're, like, should be devalued is has some, like, truth to it. Yeah. But it just went so far the other direction that it created a lot of value for the top level guys. It's like when you can get Saquon and Derrick Henry at a discount, right? And all of a sudden that creates massive value for your team, and we're seeing that. Um, yeah. but then as far as the rest of the slate, uh, well, first of all, there's some good football on Saturday, um, including like Georgia, Tennessee, but uh, Sunday. 1 p.m. Raven Steelers for the AFC North. Uh, 4:30 Chiefs Bills, which is very big for the AFC picture. And uh, Sunday night is Bengals Chargers, which is also very big for playoff seating. And a great quarterback matchup. Yeah, so we're getting spoiled. We are. Uh, it's funny because of those three games you just mentioned, like. I guess you could I guess you could say like Raven Steelers of the bunch is 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 like if you had to power rank them, like it's probably the third best match. Oh that's only because the Steelers are a good great team, but like what is Russell Wilson at this point? He's obviously played well yeah. since being back, but there's there's question marks still. But that's insane because like any other week that would have been like, oh, why is this game not on Sunday night football? Right. Because part of it's because the Ravens and Steelers rivalry is so historic. Mm. But yeah, it's and you know we're just talking about the NFC playoff picture. And the Bills, Bills, Chiefs. Like if the Chiefs win, like they might lock up the one seed in like a week or two. Seriously, because yeah. the only other real tough games on their schedule are against the Texans, wh- who at this point again they've struggled quite a bit. Maybe they'll figure it out. And, and the Steelers, also, I think. and the Steelers, exactly, and the Steelers, who are seven and two as it stands. But if the Steelers lose this weekend, they have three losses. If the Bills lose this weekend, they have three losses. So the Chiefs are up three up on any team in the AFC. Mm-hmm. Um, so that could be. And their next two games are Panthers Raiders. Yeah. And the Bills after that, the Bills play the Chiefs, uh, not the Chiefs, uh, the Forty Niners. Who? Yeah. Tough, tough game. It's gonna be yeah. It's not gonna be like the Niners aren't the team they have been, but they're still very good, especially because Chris McCaffrey is now 
back you yeah. know we'll, but yeah i mean I can't uh, sorry i don't mean to cut you off yeah. um the steelers right now it's week 11 and they're playing their first divisional game yeah yeah six only... divisional games in the last eight weeks eight weeks yeah isn't that yeah. nuts and the only other i think and the only non-divisional games are the chiefs game which we mentioned yeah and it's another pretty. It's I think it's an it's an NFC opponent. I can't think off the top of my head, but like yeah, it's it is bizarre. crazy. The Bears also I think played their first divisional game this weekend. Like how does that happen against the Packers? Um, it's a great question. I don't. Know. The Bills. The Bills play the Patriots um, twice in the last three weeks of the season. I hate when they do that. I just don't like it. It's so weird. I love having like playing divisional like a bunch at of, the end of the season, at, but at yeah. the end of the year that makes sense. But the like play the team same team twice in three weeks. It's like what? What are we doing? Yeah, it's it's bad. I don't know, man. But uh, what else is going on in your life? Uh, not too much. I'm um, it's day off Thursdays. Day off, which day is off Thursdays. Uh. Decided to be very productive. Last night, it was a very cool feeling. Like, you, you know how when you get home from work or get home from a long day of class and you don't have anything, like you're technically off the next day, but you get home early. It was like one of those days where I got home, like had dinner and I was just like, I went for a walk, you know, clean some stuff, stuff up. And I was like, I was laying in bed and watching a movie and watching Game of Thrones. And I had like this feeling. I was like, man, I don't have anything. To, I, I was like, I could do. This is such a peaceful, comfortable feeling. Like I am just, I don't have to do anything. Um, with that, that feeling said, when you get like pumped that you're like excited that you have nothing to do, like that exactly. feeling. Yeah. Like you literally are just like no responsibilities. Although I did do a bunch of stuff today. Um, mow the lawn. Shout out me, son of the shout year. Out you. Shout out me. Uh, mow the lawn. Went on another walk. Two walks in in like fourteen hours. Who's doing it better than me? Nobody. Uh, and then, you know, um, what else did I do? Oh, I went shopping. I haven't gone shopping in a long time, but I was like, hey, I, I need, you know, winter stuff, essentially. So I went shopping uh, at the Under Armour outlet. Got a pair of shoes, which is cool. Like 30 bucks. Shout out Under Armour outlet. But sponsor us. Uh, but what was funny is I went to another store, like down the street, and was walking in, had like an earbud in one ear, sort of just was like, I was like, I had sweatpants on in like a, like, not a trench coat, but like a very like grungy kind of like, it, it's a gross looking coat. Like it's not, you know, it's whatever. Looks kind of, um, I looked uh, uh, grimy, so to speak. You know, I didn't look my best, which is fine. I was just trying to shop at Dick's. I'm walking in this woman and walks up to me and she's like, hey. I like you're that guy, and I was like, "Yeah, I am the guy from the STR podcast." How'd you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, I was like, you so, were like, "Oh, you're one of the 11. Yeah, so, so, so <laughs> you, you, Will Anderson, uh, maybe Zach Patron, maybe. Uh, and so, uh, but no, she was like, "Yeah, yeah." She was like, "My my uh, my husband's a big fan of yours," and I was like, "Oh, cool." And she was like, "Can I take a picture with you?" And I was like, "Sure." And it was the, it was real funny. It was like a uh you know recognize you from what you're doing now not from Bampton. correct yeah, yeah that's yeah, gotta yeah. be a great feeling it was because uh you know i've been recognized a handful of times um in my like since doing working in in <clears throat> you know, the field that i'm working in uh but it is like it's always kind of cool to be like oh like so that's someone who pays attention that's who, huge you know? and uh so it was real funny she was a super 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 nice woman um, and she was like, yeah, my husband's a big fan. And she's like, he never wants to go into the stores, but I do. And he always sits in the car and she's like, this is, I'm going to show him this picture and be like, see, you got to come into the stores now. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. That's, that's sweet. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I got, got, got some real good, uh, merchandise, uh, from the, the shops, uh, in the Pittsburgh, uh, what's it called? The thing. The, the dicks like warehouse thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah, hanging out now, and then I'm going to going to get wings later with a couple guys, and I'm just oh. like, man, it's a great day. Is that like your Thursday tradition? I feel like you've said you've been doing that a couple times. I have done it like four 
three this i think it will be my fourth time doing it yeah it's almost become a tradition at this point just because it's a great tradition day I off try. thursday night football wings that's a yeah. good day i i've like i'm starting to hit it hit it to a science where like if i don't hang out with people like on my day off i'm like you know like you get bored like whenever you're just like by yourself so i've tried to put myself out to be like hitting up people and be like hey let's get dinner hey let's go and it just always so happens that if i say bar bill then most people are like oh yeah like i'll go you know what i mean just because it's bar bill great spot yeah so great spot also back to your thing about being recognized um i don't maybe we talked about this on this podcast i can't remember um but i feel like being that type of like that level of celebrity is the most ideal thing ever where it's like so cool when people come up to and like recognize you where you're mm-hmm. like yeah like, like that's that. that's awesome like heartwarming yeah. like they appreciate the work i do like that is so cool where yeah. like if you're less celebrity then like you don't get like get walked up to and like they show you love but if you're more than that to the point where like a lot more than that where like it's a, a nuisance that where people are like constantly coming up like you can't even go out to dinner then like it sucks but like that range that i feel like you're falling into and will continue to fall into is going to be like the greatest thing of all time yeah it's it's it is cool like i i think i might have talked about it on the previous pod but it's like people don't come up to you as if because i'm not a like i'm just like a guy like i just work you know in a public setting um like i'm a public facing person so like but it's funny because people will come up to you like you're good friends with them you know what i mean and so like that's always really nice because it's like nobody's ever coming up to me like hey man why you, you know it's just like hey like how you doing you know what i mean so mm-hmm. yeah it's, uh, it's cool and it doesn't happen like i don't want to pretend like it happens like all the time it doesn't but when it does happen it's like oh that was nice like that was a cool interaction so right which makes the and when it does happen even cooler for sure for sure yeah yeah, yeah. that's so how, how's your week been pretty good it's been uh just like staring at the clock waiting for uh it to be saturday when i run the marathon um oh. which i feel like is all i have talked about for the last four months but um so uh yeah so i've been doing that um gotten through a bunch of things did well on my uh test last week so that's good um i had a uh big uh coffee meeting this morning like networking thing with like this guy at this company that i think is really cool uh, but then I also had a uh, kind of meeting today that is setting up a uh, job to start working some part-time hours at a company that I really like in January, which works out really well. Um, so that's, I guess, big news, um, mm-hmm. which I really need because, like, yes, I'm busy with school, but I also have just a lot of time during the day where I'm just like, dude, I'm bored. I like wish I had something more to do. Um, so that's kind of coming together. But uh, honestly, the biggest thing for me right now is, I mean, other than the fact that I'll be, you know, more busy with more school and more work kind of starting in January, um, I've really liked having this like major purpose and thing I'm training for for the marathon. And, you know, come Saturday at like noon, I won't have that anymore. And that's going to be uh, interesting. Like, I got to find the next thing. Um but, you know, I also want to give myself, like, some time to, like, chill for a sec. But uh, come 2025, I want to, you know, have some some big goals out there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, I think we actually talked about this recently in a pod where it was like, it's OK to just, like, give yourself a break after doing. Yeah. Something. And it's almost like a very positive thing. Like, it's something that can give yourself a moment of like reprieve, right? Cause then you're going to be what I've felt like is like in moments in my life where I actively feel like comfortable with what I'm doing. And sometimes it's comfortable not working on something big um, or working towards a big goal. It's like, if I'm feeling comfortable, it's like, I know I can't let that feeling last forever. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not going to last forever. Like just knowing yourself, like in your own patterns, you're not going to allow yourself to feel comfortable being comfortable forever but it's like when i'm feeling that way it's like i'm gonna cherish it for a little bit because it means i've you know reasonably done something i should be proud of 
And then secondly, it's like, I know there's this feeling is going to expire at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I might as well like let it, let it ride while it lasts. And then I'm, you know, in a couple months or not even a couple months in a couple weeks, I might be like, damn, all right, what's the next thing. And then that happens. Like, what happens naturally, like almost like letting itself play out naturally, as opposed to the moment you're done with the marathon being like forcing yourself into something else, pushing yourself hard. And it's like, you're going to probably be in the middle, like in the middle of it. Like, damn, I wish I just chilled for like a moment, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so I, uh, going to run the marathon and then stuff my face with donuts after. Nice. And, uh, realistically, if we're being honest, probably going to like black out at like 2 PM. Yeah. Yeah. Realistically. That's yeah. That's and then I'm going to have to revive myself and then celebrate further and then yeah. wake up Sunday feeling horrible. And watch some football. And watch some football. So that's good, though. I've been waiting on this weekend for a very long time. And I haven't been this excited for like a weekend in a long time. Are you? I feel like we talked a lot about the marathon, but like, are you nervous at all to run it? Like, I know you, I know you're going to be able to finish it, but like, Mm -hmm. I feel like we talked a lot about what's going to happen after, but not actually like the marathon itself. Yeah. Good question. Um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous at all. I'm definitely much more excited than nervous. So I have a a goal of running it in three and a half hours, which is like an eight minute pace. Um, and I ran the I ran twenty miles at eight minute pace. So like, it's possible for sure. But like, and then I've had more weeks of training since then. I'll be more rested going into it. I'll have eaten more carbs, which will give me more fuel to do it. And then I'll have, you know, race day kind of adrenaline and all that stuff where I feel like I should be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'd be lying if I said there wasn't part of me that was a little nervous. But like, what if I like push too hard and then cramp up and then don't finish and that'd be horrible. And these people are coming to visit and like, that would suck. So there's definitely part of me that's nervous, but it's like a healthy level of nervous. Right. I'm definitely normally someone to worry too much. Um, just like throughout my life about stuff like this. But I can feel like as I'm getting older and just like living through more of these things, um, I I get more excited and less nervous. But like there's always an element of that. Um and then there's also the element of uh I'm running it with Mike and um our plan is to like run together and then kind of like see what happens from there and i'd be lying if there wasn't like a like psycho like way too competitive person in like the way back of my brain that's like oh i like gotta finish first and like every time i like feel that i like run through the whole scenario in my head and i'm like hey like who really cares yeah um but there's definitely like a piece of me that's like oh i gotta i gotta finish first and then like he'll like say something like uh just like classic mike like you know like poking at you and being like what like oh yeah like here's my uh, tracking thing or you can just like go like two miles ahead of tim and you'll probably find me and like sends like winking face like stuff like that which is just like funny but yeah um i'd be lying if there, there wasn't part of me that's like a little like competitive about that but like i don't know if i like I shouldn't be like I shouldn't care at all. I should just run whatever I should like. However, the best I can, the best I should just run the best race I can, and then whatever happens happens, and who cares? And as long as I do that, I'll be really happy. Yeah, I know. I agree. It's like, um, I mean, yeah. I'm not that I'm running the marathon, but like, I definitely understand the idea of like, if you're running it, you're kind of, you know, r- racing in general is just inherently competitive right uh, but yeah at the same time like a marathon's a little different it's like it's an impressive feat to finish it in the first place mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's not like a hundred yard or a hundred meter dash where it's like nobody's like oh my goodness you finished that hundred meter like you know <laughs> what i mean so it's different um yeah. so like yeah I, I mean i understand where you're coming from but like at the end of the day like you're both gonna finish and everyone's gonna be like oh wow they just ran 26.2 yeah, miles. Yeah, no, it's going to be awesome regardless. Um, so. 
That does bring up a point. I was actually talking about this with someone the other day where someone just like within the group just like brought up like that they're like competitive and then like everyone was talking about like how competitive they think they are. And like when I said my answer, uh, I think a couple of people thought I was crazy because I said, um, I feel like I'm extremely competitive, but I'm also self, the fact, I think they thought, it, they th what they thought was crazy, I think, was the fact that how much I, like, thought about this, like, how thought out this answer was. Yeah. I said, yeah. I think I'm extremely competitive, but I'm also self-aware enough to know that I'm extremely competitive, where, like, we'll be doing the smallest thing, and I'll be, like, analyzing, like, the absolute best way to win, but on the outside, I'm trying absolutely everything to not convey that I'm really competitive. And then it's like a, a battle of like winning in my own head, just like for my own like self. Right. I want that. And but then like also just like conveying having a good time and like being civil with everyone at all times where like no one I feel like I do an OK job of like masking that where for people sure. don't think I'm being overly competitive. But in the back of my head, I'm always like trying to optimize like the best way to win this like little tiny game. Yeah, I've always I've always I mean, I've been you for, you know, 10 years and like, yeah, I've always gotten that vibe where it's like you're definitely competitive, but like you contain yourself in a way to to make it seem like you're not being competitive. Almost maybe I don't do a good enough job. Maybe well, I, it, <laughs> I can like at this point, like I can tell when you're. I wouldn't say bothered by something when it comes to like competitive, but it's like, Oh, like, Tim, like Tim's Tim wants to like Tim almost wants to win type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I can, like you can definitely tell like you're holding back, but and you know, having a good time or trying to have a good time, but it's like, yeah, no, he really would like to, there's part of him that cares more about winning than, than having a good time. Right now. <laughs> for me. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. Yeah. For me, I was feeling like, that's something I need to work on. I don't know. I mean, <sighs> Life I see up. both sides of the coin where it's like, yeah. like you can't just not be competitive either. Like that, right. that, like, I don't get that. I, I, I you yeah. should be striving for something, but at the same time, like in small little things, like you shouldn't have it ruin your time. You want to ruin your day. Yeah. Over like pickleball. Um, right. I'm competitive in a lot of ways, but I like, I'm good at separating like those small things from, like real life so to speak like mm -hmm. i'll play pickleball with my friends and like you know i'm suck at pickleball and like it's just like okay yeah i know i'm not good at this i'm not going to be competitive i'm also very good at not participating in things i'm bad at like i had a, i've been asked to play basketball with a couple of my coworkers. i'm not good at basketball can't play it like i'm six two which is obviously uh you know taller than the norm and like people want to throw me at like center, which is fine. But like, man, I'm bad at basketball. So I try to avoid playing basketball because I know I'm bad at it. But I'm competitive. Like I'm very competitive in like life and career oriented things, Um, which like another another one of those things where it's like this is good at times and this can be very bad at times because it's like good because you want to push yourself and you want to do good things and you want to, you know, continue to grow as a human being. But m more so, you know, in a career in your career and your job. Um, but it's also can be bad because it makes you do uh like almost work too hard at times, right? Like you can burn yourself out. Thankfully I haven't really like I've met, been able to manage that. But um yeah, I I I, I comp being competitive is it it just helps push, I feel like. I don't think it's an overall bad thing. But like yeah, getting Getting worked up over like pickleball can be, yeah. Not that you've been worked up over pickleball, but like, yeah, it, it's definitely. Yeah, I feel like I, I don't know. I land in a weird spot on it because, like, I feel like if I had less self awareness, I have like the level of competitiveness that would be like, dude, this guy needs to like get a grip. Like, this guy needs to like chill out. Like, that's the like level of competitiveness that I operate at. But yeah. I'm 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 lucky to say that I like have enough, I think at least, self awareness. I think, yeah, I, I and so. that's definitely something that I've also, I think, gotten better at as I've matured. Like as I was when I was a kid, I probably got like 
way more pissed off. Um, but I don't know, like, because I was talking about it, and it was like there were girls in the group, and one girl's like, I'm just not competitive in the slightest, and like, I just never care about any of that stuff at all. And I was like, I don't know if that's necessarily like a good thing, but I guess I don't know. People like want different things and well, have different personalities. Yeah, I, 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 I like my immediate reaction was like, oh, like that's like I didn't say this, but I was like, that's weird. Like I don't think that's a good thing. And then like the more I like sat with it, I was like, I don't know. It doesn't even matter at all. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think like being competitive in you know, small things like as, as a kid being competitive and wanting to win, it's, it's like a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it depends on where you like if you play it. sports and stuff. Yeah. If you play sports, it can be a good thing. You just have to like drive that to a healthy place when you become an adult, because mm -hmm. like 99.9% .9 of those kids are not going to play sports as adult. I mean, they're not, they're not going to make money as uh, uh, playing sports as adult. So it's like, it's like a good thing to keep that competitive drive, but it's like, okay, how are you going to focus it? You know, are you going to uh, be an ass, you know, be an ass and be competitive and, in, in like adult league hockey and, you know, be way too into it, or are you going to use it in your like career and life and just try to, you know, push yourself uh, forward. So yeah. yeah, it depends. And there's different like types of competitive too. Like, the re I think my initial reaction as to why I was like, I don't think that's a good thing that you're not competitive at all, was, um, also, I hope these people, I guess, technically, these people, like, there's a chance that these people could be listening to this, but, um, there's no way they're one of the 11, there's no shot, um, what was I gonna say? Because I feel like it's a generally good thing to, like, just, like, care about things. I think you just get more out of life when you, like, just give a crap again about things. Yeah. Like, yes, you should care mo more about some things than other things. Um, For sure. But I think, you know, there's a, there's an element of competitiveness that is simply just about caring about stuff. Yeah. I don't know. No, I mean, I agree, and it's... You want to, like, make sure... I don't know. It's I you want to always like it goes back to I and mean, we've talked about it on the pod before, but like wanting always having something to be like striving for or mm -hmm. whether you're working on it at all times or not, it's not really important, but just like always like requiring yourself to 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 do more um, or not, you know, to, to do more, whether it's in work or as a human and you know that isn't necessarily competitive but it but it kind of feels like it should be right like you're you're or at least competitiveness can drive um you know that push i do feel like like i've talked to, to people about it where it's like yeah when i was a kid when i was like a, you know 11 12 years old like i would go work at my parents you know small business and they're like that's crazy like you're 12, you're, 13, you know, 11, 12, you shouldn't be working. Like you should go have fun. And it's like, I'm glad that I did work. You know, I'm glad like looking back on it, like I'm glad that they did like force me to do things. Like I'm glad they weren't just like, okay, yeah, go and play video games all day. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, at the time I hated it. Are you kidding me? Like the time I was like, no, I don't want to work for eight hours on my, on spring break or, you know, on Easter break or whatever. But like, now I look back on it and I'm like, oh, I'm really glad that I was doing something because it's now putting me in a spot where, you know, I really want to work and I really want to drive, which, mm -hmm. you know, there's part of that where it's like, Oh, maybe I have an unhealthy relationship with work, you know, that maybe I want to do it too much at times, but at the same time, it's like, I'd rather be obsessed with it than be have an aversion to it. You mm -hmm. know, I'd rather be obsessed with something I have to do than yeah. hate doing something I have right. to do. You right. have to work regardless, right? There's very few people right. in this world who will get away with not working, you know, 40 plus hours a week. Yeah. So having to focus on toning it down is the lesser of two evils in right. terms of being compared to having to tone it up. Correct. Yeah. I feel like it's a lot easier to tone it down um, than tone it, than bring it up. Sure.
Definitely. Well, uh, what do you uh, got going for next week? What do I have going for next week? Uh... The more and more we do these podcasts, by the way, I don't mean to cut you off again. I feel like I keep doing that. Um, We just like get into a zone and like 30 minutes goes by and I don't even notice. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like we've been going for, I think, over 30 minutes and I feel like we just started. Yeah. Pretty nice. I agree. I, it is nice. Um, What do I have going on for next week? Working more, uh, but no, I, I, I'm, I've sort of, sort of, uh, have hit. I think I talked about it a little bit last week, but like kind of hit that zone at work where I was like felt started to kind of feel more comfortable and and whatnot, and that sort of has continued this week, which is super nice. Uh, so I want to obviously continue to do that. Um, but yeah, I have not, I'm nothing like super out of the ordinary for me. I'm not running a marathon. Uh. Thanksgiving is coming up. Huge. So starting to think about that because as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be out of town for a couple of days for that, which is a good thing. I'm excited for that. Uh, what about you? You got any, I mean, I, I, after the, after the marathon, I got to imagine you're going to just kind of take it ease. I mean, yeah, I, uh, huge weekend. So I'm kind of in the mode of like, just like, get to this weekend, enjoy it as much as humanly possible, and then kind of regroup from there. But uh, then I'll have one more a week, and then I go home for Thanksgiving. So uh, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be a fun, like super busy, super exciting weekend. And then it's going to be, you know, try to find some, I don't know, like just like chill out and give myself a break for a little bit and kind of regroup a little and you know i've actually uh it'll be really nice going home because it feels like i like just got to charlotte but i've been here for four months which uh yeah i, I like did the math today and i was like whoa like that's kind of crazy like yeah I feel like that went by really fast um yeah dude time is flying right now it is kind yeah. of like I was looking at the schedule, um, you know, at work, and I was like, "Oh, like Thanksgiving's like, I think it's like two weeks, two weeks from today, I think." Yeah, dude. And it's like, it is. it's like I feel like I just started at my job, like, like somebody I was talking to someone yesterday at work, and they're like, "Oh, well, yeah, when did you start?" And I was like, "I don't know." I was like, "Let me think," and I was like, "Yeah, back in September." And it's like that feels like it's kind of crazy how quick time is going. Yeah, dude, I have a little uh, whiteboard in my kitchen with like a I'm like counting down the days until the marathon. It like says days till marathon. And I remember when it said like 77. Yeah. And now it's at two. Like, and it feels like that went by so fast. Like, I don't know. So time's flying. Um, So I guess maybe, you know, looking at that and. Get to this weekend, get through it, have a ton of fun, like as much ton- fun as I can possibly have, and then kind of like, I don't know, start like slowing down, appreciating things, and maybe making time go a little slower, and uh, just appreciating what I got, and uh, spend some good time at home after that. But uh, we'll have another pod before I go back home. Anyway. We'll have another pod. We'll talk about we'll talk about revisiting Rochester, Rochester, and then we'll have the in person pod. For episode uh, 20, for the Adrian Peterson podcast. Uh, Adrian Peterson. We'll, we'll, we'll do that later. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 I'm going to save that. That'd be crazy. Just uh, an entire hour of us in person naming 28. Because I feel like 28 is a big number. I feel like 28, like, first first number since, like, 24, where I'm like, oh, there's a lot of, you know. Sure. Definitely. That's only, you know, four episodes. That's not The AP pod. The AP pod. Right. Get ready. Um. Yeah. I, yesterday, not to change topics too quickly, but yesterday after work, uh, my buddies were playing like from my college friends were like playing Fortnite, and we have a group chat, um, for basically just to be like you. The only time you text in it is basically just like Fort question mark. Like that's the only thing you know, and the only other answers the only is like a text, like text, like text, or just no. <laughs> or, you know and it's just like why would you use text now but whatever so the other day i was like you know what like i haven't played fortnite in forever heck yeah and, and so i was like oh fort like question mark 
and um eventually hopped on no i didn't even hop on fortnite i literally like they were in a facetime group facetime and i got in it only one person was playing fortnite and the rest of us were just like watching the lakers game but it was fun because it was like the first time i like talked to a, a group uh not the first time but it was nice just kind of getting back with like uh and talking to like college friends for like a for a couple hours and just yeah. like oh damn like lebron is 20 at the half that's crazy you know? yeah Wemby, like Wemby, Giannis, and Giannis, LeBron, thirty point triple double. Um, Cade Cunningham, thirty five points on thirty four shots. Wasn't it a uh, LeBron had like he's the oldest player to ever have three straight triple doubles, breaking his own record from like five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> how is he? How can anyone say he's not the goat? It drives me insane. I saw someone on a. Uh, something like TikTok or something and he was like you know i've been like on the jordans the goat train for a long time because i've always said i value peak more than longevity and jordan had a higher peak than lebron even though lebron has the second highest peak of all time so like, okay like fair take like i disagree but like whatever and uh then he was like but like that doesn't mean long- longevity doesn't have any you know isn't a factor into this conversation and he's like at this point now like i feel like the longevity has overtaken the gap in between their peaks because that was already small and i was like this guy's got a brain let's go yeah yeah i hate the 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 six rings to be and the well lebron's lost in the finals you know a million times and i was like yeah like Michael Jordan get eliminated in the first round a million times. Like what? Mm, you know, like not a million. Get, that's where it's gonna fall into, and then it's just you don't get anywhere. I, do you think that uh, it will? Because I think it's pretty fifty fifty right now. But I feel like the majority lean Jordan. But I yeah. feel like by the time LeBron retires, he's gonna get like a massive bump. Yeah, it's. It's tough. Some people like, start like really looking back on what the heck he just did. After LeBron won with the Lakers, uh, what was twenty twenty? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when they won in twenty twenty, if he had like rode off into the sunset, I think at that point, it's weird to say because he's been he's still been very good the last couple of years. I think if he'd rode off into the sunset, that, that bump would have been huge. But now he's kind of struck around for a couple of years. And is still put up insane numbers. He passed Kareem. Yeah, uh, I feel like he needed to pass Kareem. He needed to pass Kareem for sure. And but now he's he's at a point where like when he retires in the next couple of years, like he's gonna be like a second round exit, probably. Yeah, uh, if he could find a way to win one more, it would be locked. I know. I agree. That's the thing. It would be locked. Play. It's like, not even a question. For sure. And that's the thing is people are like, oh, well, like LeBron's not going to win another. LeBron's not going to win another. He's never going to catch Jordan. It's like, I don't think he, A, he's not going to win two more. I was like, A, I don't think he needs another one to, to pass Jordan because I obviously oh, think he is to go. But if he did get another, like it couldn't like, No one can even say anything. Like, what do you even say? Like, what's the rebuttal? I guess he's got one more, but like, yeah, on top of like being, having like worse a worse resume in every other facet. Yeah, I, I, I mean the, the, like, the differences at like what they were doing in their last like three seasons. How petty like, would it be for like him to just like completely like ring chase? I think that I think I'd heard his case. What if he was like forty three and just like vet minimum on the Celtics? Yeah, I no, think that it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't help, but it wouldn't help. No, well, that's the thing too. Is it's like I think it low key would <laughs> it would help, you think, if he just like technically had another ring and like played a role? I was gonna say, it depends on what his role was. Like, what like, if he was just like on the Celtics and he like was like the fourth scoring option, and he averaged like 14, like five and five. I think that would help. Like an efficient because... 14, 5, and 5. Like, like that might LeBron help. LeBron could probably do that at 50 years old. Yeah. Well, who said it was I uh I don't know. I don't remember who said it. I can't recall. Maybe it was Chuck, Charles Barkley. I hope it wasn't, because he is 
he's funny, but he has bad takes. But yeah. whoever said it was like LeBron could be just like an elite Draymond Green until he was like fifty years old. I like know. that's 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 in the cards, man. I there was like I mean it was just like some random like Shams Shams whatever his name is uh, Bleacher Report thing today that said like LeBron like could call it quits in like two years, but like Bronny, like Bronny's like if he has some success, it might like prolong it. Yeah. But it's also like, I like, I get it, dude. Like, who am I to say? Like, he's 40 years old. Like, he just probably wants to like drink wine and like enjoy the like massive amount of wealth that he's produced for his family. Yeah. But like, if he play like played, he could play for, he could still be like a legit NBA player for like, 10 more years, especially if he took like the, the Joel Embiid like rest protocol where like, he doesn't play back to backs. He like takes long rests, like, like whenever he gets like a tiny thing, like dude, like how, how late, how long do you think he could play if he just like made that his life's mission? I mean, he, how old is he now? 43? No, he's like, I think he's 39 or 40. Is he really? Why did I think 43? It's probably because people have been saying he's 40 for three years, but he was actually like 38. That's true. He's 39. Yeah, wow. I don't yeah. know. Why I, thought. Uh, I think he could play another five, six years. Yeah, but like, what point do you think he would be like Draymond Green? Probably like 44, 43. Uh, he, probably sooner than that, honestly. Maybe a little sooner. I mean, he's already averaging, like, last year he averaged, what, like, 26? 9 and 9 or something? He averaged, well, yeah, but, like, how good were the Lakers? You know, I think that's, that's a part of it, too, is, like, his usage rate is also going to be, like, insane. I don't know. They they have an actual coach now. True. I love JJ. He averaged 25.7 points per game. He was 10th in comeback player of the year. Comeback player there. You mean fourth quarter? Oh, clutch player. Yeah. Clutch player of the year. He was 10th in clutch player of the year rankings. Uh, De'Aaron run, won the inaugural, and I think DeMar won. DeMar won. The... Yeah, go Kings. I was going to say, comeback player of the year doesn't exist, but it's just a CPOY, and I was like, what the hell is CPOY? Yeah. Clearly, LeBron I don't know just that. needs to find his way onto a team where he doesn't have to shoulder the entire load and then he can play for like eight more years. Oh, and yeah, it's just, could. he's trying to pass that to Anthony Davis, but Anthony Davis normally doesn't play that many games. And then it's just always well, stuck doing the same thing. And he's a big where you can't even run like. Full I would circle. love to see him win one more or play 10 more years and just like have the most insane career stats ever, which he already does. Full circle moment, though. We started the episode talking about Rakeem Christmas wearing number 25. Dalton Connect wearing number four. Connect four is electric. I was watching the Lakers game last night. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I know that it wasn't like, you know, the first game he played for the Lakers or anything like that. But it was like, I saw that. I was like, oh, Connect four. I was like, that's sick. I was like, I was like, I know that was like a story when it first happened, but I was like, oh, yeah, that is sick. I love when uh I love when more players will do that. I do too. You know, always just like it's a little like this guy. This guy is thinking. I get it. He understands. I guess it. So I get it. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to stop. Unless you got anything else. Next four, baby. Um, no, I'm good. I'm good there. Uh, LeBron James, forty three years old for some reason. Apparently, allegedly. Sorry for that. That was a bit of a that was a Freudian slip on my part. That's all right. I think it actually is because people have been saying he's 40 when he's when he was 38. So yeah. then for three years, people have been saying he's 40, which would then make sense for him to be 43 in your head. A couple couple a couple episodes we talked about the COVID time jump. That's what happened. Yeah, that's what that's what it is. For sure. Well, great up. All right. Well, everybody hit the like button, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and uh We'll see you in the next one. Ian, we'll catch you. do you know what you're supposed to do to end the episode? Love you guys. No. 27.
episode. We said this at the very last, uh, the very last like second of the last episode, and I just remembered it. Yeah, there it is. All right, for the so, white episodes. <laughs> all right, peace out, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. See ya.